adventurers and studio owners. Welcome to the Dance to Learn YouTube channel. My name is Jessica Strong and I am the creative director and owner here at Dance to Learn. And today I have a super fun video where I will be discussing how you can inspire and motivate your students to follow classroom directions and expectations without them even knowing that they are following rules. Now, before I dive into today's video, I'm excited to announce a new subscriber giveaway that I will be conducting on each new video broadcast right here on the Dance to Learn YouTube channel. So if you follow Dance to Learn, then you might know that I offer dance teacher memberships and the dance educator membership gives dance instructors access to our library of video lesson plans. And these lesson plans are conceptually based lesson plans that follow a different theme every month. They always include a teacher's guide, prop and music list, and video demonstrations. Now I will be giving away a free month of this membership package to a new YouTube subscriber during each new video that's uploaded to the channel. All you need to do is subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking that red subscribe button down below and be sure when you do subscribe that your channel is public so I can enter your name into our wheel of names. Then be sure to watch each new video as they're uploaded to see if you are the winner. And if you are selected to win, you will need to claim your prize by sending me an email. And my email address is at the bottom of each video's description. So without further ado, let's put the wheel of names up here and let's spin the wheel and see who our first lucky winner is. Congratulations, Debbie's Dance. Please send me an email to claim your prize. So now let's dive in to today's video. So today I am sharing some creative classroom management tips and tricks for preschool dance teachers. Now my goal as a preschool dance instructor is to inspire and motivate my students to want to follow my classroom rules and expectations. Because without our classroom rules and expectations, we may have a classroom that looks a little like this. are important. Having classroom rules and expectations are important first and foremost for the safety of our students. Imagine, if you will, a classroom full of students who aren't following rules and directions. That's right, soon our dance classrooms would turn into a scene from Kindergarten Cop and we certainly don't want that. Our students should feel safe in the classroom setting. But just because we have classroom rules and expectations in place doesn't necessarily mean that our students are just going to follow them. That's why I've created today's video. Now my goal as a dance teacher is to inspire and motivate my preschool age dancers to want to follow my classroom rules and expectations. But if I just shouted out commands at them, like no running, or I need you to wait your turn, or let's keep our mouths quiet while the music is playing, now there's no guarantee that they will take heed and instinctively start behaving better. And why? Because they don't have a reason to. So how can we inspire and motivate our preschool-aged dancers 
to want to follow our classroom rules and expectations. For that answer, I gathered my inspiration from the queen of rulemaking, Mary Poppins herself. Shall we begin? It is a game, isn't it, Mary Poppins? Well, it depends on your point of view. You see, in every job that must be done, there is an element of fun. You find the fun, and snap, the job's a game. So that's right, to inspire and motivate our students to follow our classroom rules and expectations, we should turn them into a game. Now in my classes, my rules and expectations are hidden within the transitions and within my class flow and structure in a way that my students don't even realize that they are following a set of rules. They just think that we are playing a fun game. So how do we turn our classroom rules into games? For that, let's take a look at some common classroom rules and how we can turn these common rules and expectations into fun games for our students. What about the rule, no running? So obviously, we don't want our dancers to be running around the room because they may fall down and get hurt. Or worse, they might crash into another dancer, causing one or both of them to get hurt. So how can I inspire and motivate my dancers to walk instead of run? There's a game I call Bibbity Bobbity Boo. And here's what I do. I greet my dancers at the door with a magic wand. And I ask them, what color glass slippers do you want to wear today? Then I take my magic wand and I say, bibbity bobbity boo. And I show them how to put on their tiptoes or their glass slippers and a beautiful princess crown on their heads. And they tiptoe walk into the classroom to sit on a spot. Now, if you have boys in your classroom, I always give them anti-gravity shoes to help them float high in the sky. Another rule or classroom expectation we might have is for our students to sit or stand on a certain spot during warm-ups and standing exercises. So to inspire and motivate my students to sit on their spots, I invest in big foam mats from the Dollar Tree and they look something like this. They sell these in their decor section and they change them out every season. But I place a mat on the floor at the start of our class in our learner's circle and the students tiptoe to their spot. Now to keep them there, a couple things need to happen. Number one, you need to demonstrate how to sit on their spot because remember, they will mimic you. So what you can do is show them what not to do with their spots. For example, do we wear our spots like a hat? No! Do we throw our spots like a frisbee? No! Do we scrunch up our spots like this? No! What do we do with our spots? We sit on them. So if you ever have a dancer who forgets, you can just use this next tip to get them back to their spot. So what is our next tip? And what rule does it go with? Waiting turns. Our preschoolers love to move. That's why they are in a dance class. But there are times where we need them to wait their turn to dance. This is especially hard for them if what they see their other classmates doing looks like so much fun. So this is where my magic super glue game comes into play. Here's how it works. Each dancer holds out their hands like so, and then I ask them, what color super glue would you like today? They say all sorts of things. Rainbow sparkles, silver glitter, midnight blue with starbursts. Then I sprinkle their magic super glue on their hands, and they rub their super glue all over their backs, all over their bottoms and all over their hands and then they stick boop, the 
themselves to the wall. And they can't be unglued until Miss Jessica sprinkles some magic fairy dust on their heads to release the magic. So if you have a dancer who forgets about their spot during class or how to wait their turn, just give them some new magic super glue so they remember where they should be when learning how to dance and stretch. So now let's talk about transitions. Transitions are the hardest part of class because it's the time when our students, if they're not given clear directions, are most likely to decide how they want to behave. Now I have a go-to transition game that I want to share today, and that's my Magic Fairies transition. I created this specifically for my ballet tap combo class, which is one of my most popular classes. I have about 15 to 20 students enrolled in ballet tap combo at any given time. So that's over 30 tap shoes. Now, if you've ever taught a tap class, then you know what it can be like to have crazy tap shoes going at all times. So I created the Magic Fairies to help us with this. And here's how it works. Our classroom has Magic Fairies or Magic Superheroes, if it's a boy class, and they love watching us dance. But we might scare them away when it gets too loud. So what we do is we catch our magic fairies to keep them safe and we do this when it's time to dance across the floor. So what we do is we stand up and we very quietly and slowly we tiptoe walk to the magic fairy wall where all of our magic fairies grow and shh. Then when we get there we reach up high and we catch a magic fairy put our magic fairy in our pocket by sitting crisscross applesauce. We can show our friends our magic fairies and keep them safe. Now our magic fairy flies away if we forget to sit crisscross applesauce or if our tap shoes get too loud. Then we have to catch a new one. Now what about talking when the music plays? Now this may happen when it's time to start practicing a recital dance or when you're trying to practice important skills. Now we don't want our dancers talking over the music because it's important that we can hear the music when we dance. So my game for this is to pick a favorite princess or superhero to come freeze our mouths. Now, can you think of a princess that is the master of freezing? Yes. Of course we can. That answer is Elsa. Now Elsa comes along and freezes our mouths right before the music plays. And if it's a boys class who need to have a quiet mouth, here comes Iceman to save the day and freeze our mouths. Now speaking of recitals, how do we inspire and motivate our students to practice their recital dances? Sometimes they may get bored of practicing, or we might hear the common, I'm too tired to practice because they had so much fun from all the other dance games that we've played all day. Well, I have another game for that too, and I call it copy the teacher game. So before we start a recital dance, I always say, okay, my friends, it's time to play a game of Copy Miss Jessica. So here we go, copy me. Here we go, copy me. Here we go, copy me. Oh my gosh, you are so good at copying Miss Jessica. Now, I'm going to play some music and I want you to copy me as the music plays. Now before we begin, here comes Elsa and she's going to Freeze our mouths so we can hear the music. Okay, let's get ready to copy Miss Jessica and earn our stickers. Now, what happens if our students lose focus during class and forget what they should be doing? Even the games that are the most fun can still be forgotten 
from time to time. So if your dancers do get distracted by something else, try this little refocused game. First, stop what you're doing. Turn off the music and say, I see you, Miss Jessica, and you put on your binoculars. Then you say, I hear you, Miss Jessica, and you turn on your listening ears. Sometimes we may even need to eat the marshmallows out of our ears. Then, mm, we freeze our mouths. They love this game. Then it's time to re-explain the game that you are playing and practice it again. All right, dance teachers and studio owners, that's all I have for you today. But that was seven classroom rules and expectations that I shared with you on today's video. If you enjoyed them, you can let me know by giving this video a thumbs up. And also let me know in the comments down below which of these seven rules and expectation games you will be implementing into your classes. And if there was a rule or expectation that I didn't cover today, let me know that in the comments as well. And if there are enough dance teacher problems out there, then I will definitely film a part two and share that with you right here on the Dance to Learn YouTube channel. Now, if you haven't already, don't forget to click that red subscribe button and the notification bell so that you never miss a future episode. Also, before subscribing, be sure that your profile is public so I can enter your channel into our Wheel of Names and you could be the next winner to try one month of our Dance Educator membership absolutely free. My name is Jessica Strong and I'm the Creative Director and Owner here at dance to learn and until next time, I hope you continue to dance, learn, and grow. Bye!